ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصهما فلا يضر الا نفسه فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله احد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد وقال عز وجل يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا واجتنا بنيه ان ذا نفع هنا اليوم आज हमारे कुछ मेहमान हैं यहाँ पे तो उसकी वजह से मैं बयान जो हूँ उसकी वजह से मैं कुछ बोलूँ इन शाह बी टॉकिंग अबाउट टू थिंग्स दैट आर इंटर रिलेटेड विद वन एंड अदर एंड यू कैन से दैट टुडेज कॉन्वर्सेशन इज अ कॉन्वर्सेशन दैट कैन बी कॉल्ड बैक टू द बेसिक्स आई वुड लाइक टू स्टार्ट ऑफ My discussion today is going to be on Surah Al-Ikhlas. Qul huwa Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad. But to be able to properly be able to discuss this surah, Surah Al-Ikhlas, I have to first define for you so that you see some wisdom in in the discussion we're going to have. Have the meaning of the word Islam. Generally when we say what does Islam mean? we generally find two answers one answer is islam means peace and the other common answer is that the word islam means to surrender wa id qala rabbuhu aslim qala aslamtu lillahi rabbil alamin when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told ibrahim aslim surrender قال اسلمت لله رب العالمين اي سرندر تو الله ذا لورد اوف ذا وورلدز بت وات دز اسلام ريلي مين فور اكزامبل وين وير ان جنه الله سبحانه وتعالى يو كان سي ان ون واي ذا بيك اوف سوره الياسين دي يو كان سي ذا هايت اوف سوره الياسين ان ون واي نوت فروم ذا برسبكتيف اوف ذا اوف ذا اكتوال مسج اوف سوره الياسين بت فروم ذا بيك is when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for example says salamun qawlun mir rabbir rahim peace allah will say peace salam salam and by the way this word peace this word salam is also used in the bible which i will discuss in a second in, in a little bit but what does the word islam mean i will give you its different variations today just so that you can have a more better and clearer understanding of the word why islam is called islam why the deen of islam why the religion of islam is called islam why and over here i want to make a point that every religion every major religion of the world is either named after a person or place hinduism is named after a place christianity is named after a person Buddhism is named after a person. Islam is the only religion that has a universal name. Islam means what Islam means which we will be discussing today. But Islam has is not named after a person nor is Islam named after a place. Unlike majority of the other uh you can say religions or even ideologies. <coughs> so What does the word Islam mean? I want to give you some examples from the Quran of the complexity of the word Islam. Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says about a cow, a cow, a healthy cow. 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted Musa, Moses, and his people to sacrifice. Musallamatun la shikata fiha. Musallamatun. Meaning a cow that one of the meanings of this word is a musallamatun la shi'ata fiha, a cow that is healthy. The word Islam, one of the meanings of the word Islam is something that is salim. Salim means not broken. Islam means something that is sound and not broken. Something that is healthy. Islam, another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, very famously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qalbun salim. Qalb, a heart that's salim, pure. A sound heart, a good heart. A good heart is qalbun salim. Salim means there's nothing wrong with it. It's good. Islam also means to surrender. Like I mentioned about Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, when Allah said to him, Aslim, or Aslim qala aslam tu lillahi rabbil alameen. Allah said to him, surrender. Islam means to surrender also. He said, I surrender to the Lord of the worlds. Abraham said, I surrender to the Lord of the worlds. In the same way, Balqis, when she entered into, uh, into the palace of Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam, she said, aslam tu ma'a Sulaiman lillahi rabbil alameen. So what does it mean? This we say assalamu alaikum to each other. Salam upon you. When we are entering into Jannah, the angels would uh, uh, say salams upon us. Salamun alaikum tibtum. Fadhuluha khalidin. Enter into this Jannah, friend. What does the word salam mean? For us to understand today. One of the problematic aspects of the word peace the word when we translate Islam as peace, is that the word peace has been very politicized in the sense that it is always used in its political sense most of the time. And when we say things like, I feel peace in my heart, it doesn't really jive in the, idiom, in the idioms of today. So the meaning that I want to leave you with, so that you, when you take all the meanings of the word Islam, and all the words of meaning of the words, the root word salama, or in which there's Islam, the verbal noun of it. Is that an air conditioner that just turned off? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, maybe it's hot. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. If the Imam asks a question, the people can answer, no problem. But no, no talking if the Imam doesn't ask the question. And over here, uh, I did also want to remember uh, something. Somebody asked me a question, I, re I realized it's a very basic question, but I'm sure a lot of people don't realize this. But this is a side point. I'm going to go back to the discussion of Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Surah Al-Ikhlas in a second. And that is that you have to, when you read Salah, you have to say it loud enough for your ears to hear. There has to be qira. You, have, you cannot, some people, they read Salah in their mind. This is not allowed. You have to read the salah. You have to read it according to Imam Shafri. If you don't read hear your own words in your ears, you, your salah is, you can say, I, I don't think the right word is to say it doesn't exist. But you know, it, it, you have to read enough for you to know that you're actually reading words, meaning your tongue has to be moving. It cannot be just you're reading salah in your mind without your tongue moving. Your tongue has to move for the recitation of the salah. Anyway, this is a side point that I wanted to make clear. So, because in case, because I know a lot of brothers and sisters, they read salah in their minds. And they do not read salah with their lips. You have to read salah with your lips. And like I said, Imam Shafri holds the opinion that you have to be able to hear yourself. But anyway, uh, but all the four schools of thoughts do agree that your tongue has to move. In the tasbihat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the dhikr of Allah, your tongue has to move. It's not dhikr of the heart that we do when we're doing salah. It is the dhikr of the tongue and the limbs, the movement of the body, as well as the, the movement of the tongues is what has to be within salah. Of course, there has to be the attentive, attentiveness of the heart also, but the lips have to be moving, and then the body parts have to be moving at the right time.
Anyway, coming back to the subject I was mentioning. So what does the word Islam mean? The word that I want to leave you with to think about the meaning of the word Islam. Islam means when you take all of its meanings, Islam means harmony. As one organic whole, Islam means to be in a state of harmony. Islam means to be in a state of no conflict. That's harmony. The opposite of harmony is to be in a state of conflict. You're in no state of conflict. You're in a state of harmony. You are where, when everything is where it's supposed to be, when everything is the way it's supposed to be, it creates Islam. So when you are in a state of harmony, you are in a state of Islam. And Islam means yes. And how do you achieve that? You achieve that by surrendering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this issue of you achieve harmony, inner harmony. You achieve inner harmony by surrendering to Allah. Now from here, I want to discuss with the ikhlas. This is the introduction that I wanted to make because the idea of one God and how it relates to Islam, the idea of one God and how it relates to the issue of harmony, how it harmonizes everything. And this is what I wanted to bring to our attention today when I discuss Surah Al-Ikhlas, inshaAllah. So, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل قل Allah says see, say it's a command, say who? First of all, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, it means whenever you see the word قُلْ in Quran, it's translated as, O Prophet of Allah, say. O Prophet of Allah, say. Because who is the Muhammad, the, you know, who is the person who the Quran is addressing? The Quran is addressing Prophet Muhammad. But in addition to that, قُلْ is also a command for all the Muslims. In this surah particularly. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qul as in not just say, sometimes we use the word say, but Qul is a command. Qala, he said. Qul, command. So the translation, proper translation will be declare. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say. Huwa. Now this huwa here, Allah could have said, for example, Qul Allahu ahad. Qul Allahu ahad. Say, Allah is one. Allah is Ahad. I will be discussing this in a second. Let me quickly. But the huwa that comes here, Allahu <coughs> Ahad. It shows huwa here is what we call the the point here of huwa is to emphasize Allah, but also to show He's wajibul wujud. Allah is the necessary existence. Huwa, He is. Allahu Ahad. He is Allah. By the way, the word Allah is the same word that Jesus, if you said the word God to Jesus, he wouldn't understand what the word God means. He didn't know. He didn't even know what the word Jesus meant. He didn't call himself Jesus. But what is the word that Jesus used for God? Very famous. It's in the Bible if you read the uh, Alai Alai, Allah. It's the same word, Allah. Jesus, you can look this up in the dictionaries of the Bible or in the Hebrew dictionaries or the Aramaic dictionaries, the word used in any of the Semitic languages, whether it is Hebrew or Aramaic, Aramaic is the language that Jesus spoke, Hebrew is also the lang another language Jesus spoke, in any of the Semitic languages, Arabic, he Hebrew, uh, Syriac, so on and so forth, any of the Chaldean, any of the Semitic languages, the word for Allah is Allah. The word for God is Allah. Now just as a side note, I have mentioned this before here, but I'm going to mention it again. There's a difference of opinion amongst grammarians. Is Allah, the word Allah, ismul jamid or ismul mushtarak? Is the name Allah, Allah? Or is the name Allah, which we say Allah, is it derived from something to come up with the word Allah? So there is a difference of opinion. So if somebody says, like for example, my name is Omar, where does it come from? We can say, for example, if I'm saying it's Ismul Jamid, that my name is my name. It's just what I choose to call myself. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to call himself Allah is one opinion. The other opinion is that the word Allah is from the word Ilah. And Ilah became Al-Ilah. And Al-Ilah became Allah. 
but there's a difference of opinion. Some say that it is derived, the word Allah is derived from different words to mean the word Allah. Or the other opinion is that no, it is Allah's name as He named Himself from the beginning. He always called Himself Allah. So there's no right answer in this. This is two different opinions uh, amongst the grammarians uh, about the word Allah. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ Say He is Allah who is Ahad. He is Ahad. Now if you notice in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not say قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ وَاحِدٌ Say Allah, He is Wahid. Wahid means one. Wahid, if you know the Arabic language, you say one for the word one, as in the number one. The number one is Wahid. Ahad doesn't mean one in that sense. Allah's name is also Al Wahid, by the way. And Allah's name is also Ahad. Why? Ahad means that one thing for which there is no, there is no two, there is no, Allah's name Wahid means Allah is one whole. He doesn't have parts, like a father, like a son. This is what Allah says, Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Allah doesn't have parts, God doesn't have parts, that the father is something, and the son is something, and something else is something. No, He is one being, one substance, one personality, one being. Allah is one, as in not the number one, but is in one whole. So, you know, mathematically, if you say 0.5 versus if you say one, in that sense, the word wahid, the word one in, in, the, in the names of Allah comes as Allah is one. He doesn't have parts. He, he is one, God is one. And He has no parts. So that's the word wahid. But ahad means something different. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Say, Allah is Ahad. Ahad means the one of which there is no other. If I say this is one pen, then there is necessarily, we know that there is another pen. But if this was the only pen in the entire universe, then you would say Ahad. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Say, Allah is Ahad. He is the one. And by the way, and this is a small thing for us to think about, that Allah says at the end of this surah, as we will learn, وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُوَنْ أَحَدٍ There's nothing like Allah, which I will discuss, but what I want to mention in regards to that is, if Allah is Ahad, then nothing in the universe is Ahad. Nothing in the universe is alone. Everything has been created in pairs. If you look at Adam, there's the, the positive charge and the negative charge. If you look at physics, there's mass and anti-mass. There's gravity, there's anti-gravity. There's the male, there's the female. For everything, everything Allah has created in pairs. Everything, and Allah says this, and there's a, there's a scientist, by the way, she's an anthropologist, her name is Fatima Jackson. She's a professor at University of Maryland. She's a professor of anthropology. She became, when she read the ayah in the Quran that from everything we have created pairs. Allah says this in the Quran. From everything we have created pairs. She said, as a scientist, I made it my business to find out something for which there is no pair. Something in the universe. I need to find something in the universe that doesn't have a pair. And she said, I looked and I looked and physics, I looked in, ev in everything. You know, if you even study basic, every, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Right? If we're made of atoms, then everything is made of positive and electric char uh, negative positive charges. So, Allah is Ahad. And over here I want to make a subtle point about this. That since everything, only Allah is one. This life, this life, then this life must also have a pair. This life also, if you see in nature, everything is in pairs. If you see, all of nature has pairs. Clouds are in pairs. I mean, I can't go into the details. Trees are in pairs, the clouds are in pairs, the waters are in pairs. Everything is in pairs. And, and in, in pairs in many levels. 
that if there is this life that is temporary, then there must be the next life that is permanent. Because that's its pair. There's this life in which you are born and you die. There's the next life in which you are nor born nor die. Nature tells us everything is created in pairs. Only Allah is Ahad. The fact that everything in nature has a pair points to the fact because the pairs of everything didn't come by accident. The pairs of everything didn't come by, by a random process. Somebody put them in place. How many uh, systems we have in the bodies where everything, things in our bodies are in pairs? Anyway, that's something the doctors would probably understand better. But the point I'm trying to make, I mean, you look at the blood circulation, that works in pairs. The breathing system works in pairs, so on and so forth. Everything works in pairs, and Allah is one. No, he is just all alone. This is what it means. Ahad means he's all alone. He has no pair, no second. So, قُلْ Say and declare, O Muhammad وسلم, هو الله هو أحد. He is Allah, he is all alone, unique. Nothing is like him. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدُ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدُ As-Samad is a very difficult word to translate. In, in, in fact, in Hebrew, there's a doctor, Dr. Abdul Basul, Asad Basul, Dr. Asad Basul. He's somebody who translated the Quran. He's, he recently came out with a translation. And he has used uh, Hebrew and Aramaic to help him understand some of the words in the Quran, which I'm not going to go into. But the meaning of As-Samad are basically two. Number one, he's unique and nothing is like him. And as-samad means two things. He's absolute. By the way, this is the only place in the Quran this, where the word as-samad is used. He's absolute. And everything is dependent upon him and he is nothing, he's not dependent upon anything. He doesn't need food. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran about Jesus and his mother. Jesus and his mother, they both used to eat food. They were both dependent upon food. God is one who is not dependent upon anything. Allah subhanahu he is absolutely independent. He's independent from time. Time is his creation. He's independent from space. He's free from space. He doesn't have a zaman or makan. If you point it to a place, if you can point and say, this is God, that's not God because he has no place and no time. He is not in any zaman or makan. Even when we talk about the throne of Allah, the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the arsh of Allah, Allah and His arsh, they cannot be as such given a place and time. So anyway, Allah is He is absolute. He is never limited. He is never dependent. Allah is Therefore, what has humanity done? Humanity has done one of the two things. Either if we want to believe in God, we have to make him like a human being. Make him like a Hercules, some demigod, or some Ram and Krishna where the, the like superhumans basically, anthropomorphists, uh, to make God like a human being. There's been an urge that, okay, if God exists, let's make him like us. Humanity has done this. So this is one extreme. You take God and you make him and you give him the qualities of human beings. <coughs> and the other extreme is to say there's no God. I don't see God. Where's God? These are the two extremes. Either you take God and make him into an idol like a human being 
And there's a reason for that, which I won't go into today, why human beings did this. Whether you study the Greeks, you have Zeus and Hercules, <coughs> whether you study Christianity, where you have the Father God and His Son, or whether you study Hinduism, where also there are many gods, and many gods means what? They're all fighting against each other. There's no harmony. When there is many gods, there's no harmony. It means one god is working against another god. And this is exactly what Quran says. Allah says in the Quran, had there been any other god besides Allah, there would have been chaos in the universe. Earth is made one day, then the next god comes, destroys it the next day because he's jet, jet. God is by nature, I can't go into this, but by nature, Allah says about himself, God is by nature. The Bible says this and Islam teaches this. That Allah is jealous. He's a jealous God. That's why he doesn't like it when somebody else will claim his place or something else will claim his place. When you say something is equal to God or, or God, this is, makes Allah angry and jealous. Jealous not in the sense like Allah is weak and he's jealous in that sense of stuff. Allah. No. But it makes him upset. And so, there is no cause and effect for him. He was nor born, nor did he give birth. If God gave birth, if God the Father gave birth to Jesus, then the question is who gave birth to the Father? If the Father can give birth to Jesus, then the question is who gave birth to him? But the one true God, he has nor time nor space, nor cause nor effect. He's above and beyond time-space complex. This world of creation, he's outside this, in a sense. It, this world of creation does not affect him. لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدْ and there is lam, walam, and never. Lam means not, not. Most translations say not, not. Lam yakun. There will never be, there can never ever be a situation. Walam yakun lahu. There can never be a situation compared to him. Walam yakun lahu kufwa means comparison. Both comparison in rank and as well as in creation. Kufwa, we use this in fiqah when we talk about marriage. Like, the uh, middle class, according to the uh, Hanafi fiqh, particularly, they make this a rule that, for example, the man should marry somebody of a lesser rank than him, not higher rank, monetarily. So that the in situation of the girl is improving from the father to the husband, the situation is improving. This is called kufwa. So if, if she was, uh, let's say, upper class, and she marries somebody from lower class, this may be a difficult situation, so Islamic law just keeps this in mind. Not that it cannot happen. The perfect example is Prophet Muhammad himself married Khadija radiallahu anha. So it's not like it can't happen. But Islamic jurists, they have considered this as a situation to consider. Uh, but anyway, the point I'm trying to make, وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدْ And there's nothing equal to Allah, because Allah is one and nothing else can be one. Only He is alone and everything else will be in pairs. And so the point I want to make here is that even, and inshallah I will finish this in my second khutbah, so over here I want to ask a question that uh, Prophet Jesus is definitely a very unique individual so who is the you can say the couple the coupling the bringing together of Jesus and who is his opposite or who is his pair because Jesus, even amongst the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was definitely unique. And the Quran and also the Bible, but I won't go into this right now, compare Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam with Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Why? 
Because Musa والسلام, had an ummah, had a nation. Prophet Muhammad had a nation. Musa والسلام, did hijrah. Prophet Muhammad also did hijrah. Prophet Muhammad والسلام, had a book, uh, the Quran, and Prophet Musa والسلام, also had a book. And so on and so forth. Like, his ummah lasted 2,000 years. Our ummah will last almost 2,000 years. So who is the pair of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam? There are two answers to this. One from the Quran and one from the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam. It's saying of the Prophet, peace be upon him. The Quran says the pair the opposite, or you can say the pair, as in pair can be opposite, or two things that come together to complement each other. The, the complementary example of Jesus, peace be upon him, is the first mathal, uh, the example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says of Jesus, in the lahi kamathali Adam, is the example of Adam. They were both created miraculously. Adam was created without a father and a son, uh, without a, a father and a mother. And Isa alayhi salatu was salam was also created without a father and a mother in the sense that the biological coming together of the male and the female never happened. Meaning it was miraculous. Allah said, be to Adam, and he was. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, be to Jesus, and he was. Kalima, this is why we say kalimatun. He was the word of Allah. Allah said be, because just having a mother wouldn't have done anything in itself. There had to be a process, as you understand from what I'm saying. So whether it was Adam or whether it was Jesus, they were both made from the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what's the similar aspect. Allah said be to Adam. And Allah said, be to Isa wasalam, Jesus peace be upon him, and they both were. This is the coupling of Jesus, the opposite of Jesus, you can say, in, in our, in our uh, Quranic teachings. And then the second one from the Sunnah of the Prophet wasalam, there will be a man that will be like Jesus. And I'm quickly, inshallah, finishing up. Uh, 